Hi, it's Father Jeremiah of Grace Anglican Church here in Gastonia, North Carolina, with another Collect Reflection. This time we will be talking about the true bread which gives life to the world, our Collect for the fourth Sunday in Lent. And as we move toward getting into that, I do ask you, you, that you do three things for me. Like this video so that whatever network this is posted on knows that you enjoyed it and that they should let other people see this video. Hit the share button. Share this with your friends on whatever social media networks you are a part of. And then, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon and you'll be notified whenever we upload new content for this channel. The Collect for the fourth Sunday in Lent. This is a wonderful and beautiful collect. It actually, this year, year B, for the Anglicans in our three-year lectionary, connects with our gospel passage. Our gospel passage is from John 6, Verses 1 through 15, it's about Jesus feeding the 5,000. And in the Gospel of St. John, it's, that's an introduction to his sermon about the bread of life that comes down from heaven, the true bread that comes down from heaven. This little section at the beginning of John 6, is the introduction is the actual feeding of the 5,000. And then Jesus talks about those implications afterwards. But that introduction does still give us a taste of what's going on with the people. And so let's hear this collect for the fourth Sunday and pray it for ourselves. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so, once more, we're praying to our Father in heaven, gracious Father, a Father who is full of grace, who is full of mercy, who is full of compassion towards us, because after all, last week we mentioned that we have disordered affections that need to be purified, and so the Lord, our Father in heaven, comes to us graciously to purify those things. But also, in this prayer, we focus in on Jesus Christ, the Son of this Father, who came down from heaven, that is, he became incarnate. He came down as a little baby in the womb of Mary and was born in human flesh and lived amongst us. Nonetheless, he is the true Son of God who came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world. Of course, this could be a launching point into all kinds of things about Eucharistic theology, and there's lots of debate and discussion amongst us Anglicans as to how exactly the Eucharist works, what's going on in our celebration of the Lord's Supper. The way I often explain it is that it is a mystery. It is fully and completely mysterious to us what Jesus is doing during communion. But nonetheless, we still truly believe that he is giving himself to us through that bread and wine because he is the true bread. He is what we need. We need him more than we need physical bread. And he came down to be that true bread. He came down to be not just true bread, but to be the sacrifice that takes away our sins. And when we feed on him, we receive life because he is the true bread which gives life to the world. And so his being true bread renews us, reinvigorates us, establishes us, redeems us because of the work he has accomplished, that it is by his life that we have life. And so when we feed on him, we receive his life. Now, it's not only in the sacrament that we can receive Jesus. When we look with eyes of faith toward the cross and recognize those promises, Jesus is dwelling in us. He is part and parcel with us and traveling through this world with us. And so we are gaining life as we look to him in faith, as we remember our baptisms, as we read the prayers of the saints, as we read Holy Scripture itself, as we commune with him through the written word where the Holy Spirit dwells, we come to know him more deeply and are given life because the word brings life. Just as Jesus himself being the true bread gives us life and we pray in light of his being that true bread which gives life to the world, that he would evermore, that the Father would evermore give us this bread so that Jesus would live in us and that we would live in him. That Jesus would come to dwell more and more fully. And this is talking about our union with Christ that begins at baptism. Mysteriously, we become united to Christ, to his body, the church, and we begin receiving life. We begin receiving the work of the Spirit in us, drawing us and working in us, ever renewing our faith and establishing us more and more as we turn to him, as we receive those benefits. And here, with the Eucharist, with scripture reading, with fellowship amongst the saints, we receive life and we become to know Jesus more and more fully in us. And as he lives more fully in us, we live more fully in him. It's a back and forth cyclical effect that as he lives in us, we live in him. And as we live in him, he lives in us. Because we have nothing, we are nothing, if we do not abide in Christ 
And when we abide in him, he will abide in us, but we don't abide in him until he abides in us. And it's a back and forth, just as John spoke of in John 15, just as Jesus speaks in John 15, I should say. We pray evermore, give us this bread. Give us this bread who is truly Jesus. And it connects over to the celebration of the Eucharist, that mysteriously through that bread and wine, we are feeding on Christ. We are receiving his body and blood, which gives us new life continually, constantly, and brings to us all of his gifts of salvation. Of course, those things aren't, can't be received unless you have faith. You can't receive salvation except with faith. The Eucharist is a place where we especially meet Jesus. We know and trust him to be there because he has promised to be there. And so we pray evermore, give us this bread of life that we might live in him and he might live in us. And so pray this prayer. Rejoice in this prayer. Rejoice in the promise and the reality that Jesus came down from heaven to be true bread that gives us life. He didn't begrudgingly come down. He came down joyfully to be that bread that gives life to the world. He wants to save you. He wants to give you life. And so look to him. Trust in him and believe that he has taken away your sins before the face of the Father so that you can know redemption. You can know salvation. You can know forgiveness of all of your sins because of Jesus. And he gives you life because he is the true bread that has come down from heaven for our sake. And so may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.